Welcome to Creatively Christian, a podcast by Theophany Media, where we inspire, inform, educate, and empower creative Christians of all types. I'm one of your hosts, Brandon Hollingsworth. Today on the podcast is Christopher Sean Shaw, director of the new Christian comedy, Church People. He discusses the complexities of making a feature film, especially one that's Christian. Hello, everyone. This is Brandon Hollingsworth coming back uh, with the the, uh, Creatively Christian podcast here at Theophany Media. And I am super excited uh, to have uh, a wonderful guest on with me today. It's Mr. Christian Sean Shaw. How are you, Christopher? Hello, sir. How are you? I'm doing doing good. And uh, I have a burning question right off the bat. Do I have to say Christopher Sean Shaw every time? (laughs) (laughs) No, no, you don't. (laughs) All right, good, good. Just wanted to clarify that. You you can do CSS or, you know, Christopher, that's fine. But yeah. I'm an old school coder. So as soon as I say, I I think CSS, I think, you know, (laughs) I think style sheets, cascading style sheets. So I won't go there. I'm just going to call you Christopher. Okay, sounds good. All right, and you can call me Brandon or Mud or whatever you like. So it's better than what Mom <laughs> called me. So. <laughs> all right, so I just want to introduce you to everybody, all of our listeners and watchers out there, out in Theophany Media, Creatively Christian Land. So Christopher Sean Shaw is an award-winning filmmaker and the owner of Anchor Productions. Uh, he helmed the currently released comedy Church People, starring Thor Ramsey, featuring Stephen Baldwin, William Billy Baldwin. China Phillips, Michael Monks, Donald Faison, um, Joey Fatone, and more. In between uh, freelance film productions, Christopher helps businesses, organizations, and individuals increase their visibility with high quality and memorable video content, consulting and coaching, branding, and social media strategies. Christopher and his family uh, reside currently in Northern California with their dog, Nugget. His favorite daily treat is Giraldi Intense 70% Cacao Dark Chocolate. That's a nugget. You said it right. <laughs> That's Christopher's, not Nugget's favorite treat. Yeah. Chocolate's bad for pooches. And I agree. Yes. So, so welcome. Yes, chocolates are bad welcome. for pooches. Well, <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, we're, we're super stoked. And uh, tell us a little bit, uh, if you would, Christopher, about um, just kind of right off the bat, we're going to wind up with this as well. But tell people a little bit about church people and where they can where they can find information about church people. I'm super stoked to see the film. Well, thank you so much. Um, it's getting great responses, thankfully. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And um, so churchpeoplefilm.com is where you can find all kinds of uh, details. So we're going to be plugging that a lot. Churchpeoplefilm.com. Um, There's a button there where you can reserve your spot to watch a virtual screening. Um, There is a um, there is a uh, button there where uh, pastors and church leaders can go to host a show. And um, I'm going to have to edit here real quick. Sorry, there is a (laughs) monitor on in the background that is going to interrupt us. So sorry. No problem. (laughs) He just walked right into that guy. That was amazing. What's that? No, you just disappeared right into the uh, oh. <laughs> right into the background. <laughs> I do tricks as well. Um, yeah, okay. So anyway, where were we? <laughs> churchpeople.com. Churchpeoplefilm.com. Yeah. So churchpeoplefilm.com is where you can uh, reserve your spot to watch a virtual screening. Churchpeoplefilm.com is also where pastors and church leaders can go to request a um, a showing. Um, at the time of this recording, so I don't know when this is going to air, but there's only about a week left of that. Okay. And I believe the virtual screenings end um, on April 22nd. All right. So um, right around the corner. window is closing That's for right. the ability to, to watch it. And then also uh, Salem Now on demand will have a church people film, uh, church people on it. Um, until I think also April 22nd. Um, okay. Now, I guess there is a possibility those dates could get delayed. I don't know. I've not, I've not been informed that that's the case. Right, right. But uh, once that window closes, then the traditional home release options won't be until probably summer or fall. So oh, wow. okay. there'll be a, a bit of a wait for that because we're kind of, we're kind of still in the theatrical window. We had a three-day theatrical run via Fathom Events. Awesome. And right now, um, you know, churches can show it via the host of showing option through uh, Faith Content Network and then the virtual screenings in Salem Now. Those are like special 
special showings. Right. Um, and the really cool thing about those showings too is that after the movie um, ends, right before the end credits roll, mm -hmm. there's about eight minutes or so of behind the scenes um, footage and interviews from set back when we were still calling it its original title, Youth Group. Oh, very cool. So you, you get to see um, some some sneak peek stuff from the <laughs> set when people, it, it, it's, it's kind of weird too, because you just watch this movie, Church People, right. and then at the end, all these people are going, go see Youth Group. You got to see Youth Group. <laughs> that's, so, that, that's the sequel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of been wild. So um, I wear another hat, you know, when I'm not on Theophany Media, Creatively Christians podcast, and I, I helm my own um, animation studio and learned a lot about the film process over the last couple of years. And there's so much, there are so many moving parts when you get to that film release stage. You're talking about still in the theatrical stage, not quite in home release. All these crazy moving parts that. Unless you're in the industry, you have no clue. You're like, oh, just a movie just comes out and it does. And this. even if you are in the industry, you have no clue. <laughs> exactly. Like like me, I have no clue how the distribution side of things works. Yeah, and with COVID, Almost everything, zero. everything changed with COVID as well. So yeah, there's so much, there's so much to learn there, which is in, you know kind of exciting, you know, if you're kind of out there and you want to learn about this. And we may have a whole other podcast where we just dive into that. But um, tell us a little bit, Christopher, about kind of what originally inspired you to get into this film space as a Christian. Uh, our, our primary audience or Christian creatives or people who are creative who maybe we pray become Christian. Uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about what inspired you personally to kind of move into this space that is a, kind of a no man's land for some Christians. My story begins in the womb. Do we have time? <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you the truncated version. All right. Um. So actually, I originally wanted to be an actor. I wanted okay. to be uh, specifically. I wanted to be a movie star. Right. Um. And so I went to college. Uh, shout out to Otterbein College, which is now Otterbein University in Westerville, Ohio, because also I grew up in Ohio. Um. I grew up in Coshocton County. Um. Was born in Coshocton City but grew up in the village, yes, the village of Plainfield. Not a town, not a awesome. city, the village I of Plainfield. It. Less than 200 people. And you were the seventh son of a seventh son of a, of a blacksmith, right? <laughs> no, not, not quite that villagey. Uh, there was an elementary school, there was a Methodist church, there was a post office, and there was a general store. Gotcha. But you could literally drive by the house I grew up in, you know, on the main street and drive on main street all the way through at, in like, I don't know, somewhere between one to two miles. If that, I mean, I think it was like close to a, like you're in and out of that village, you know, uh, don't, <laughs> like don't blink. Split. yeah, don't blink. You might miss it. Right. So, um, so yeah, so I grew up in this, uh, I had these big stars in my eyes and I wanted to be a movie star and, and, um, I went to college for acting, Otterbein, uh, their theater department. Otterbein uh, at the time was really well known for theater and music. Okay. And because they had robust theater and music departments. And I assume they still do, obviously. But um, so, yeah, so I went, I went there and then, but I was also dabbling with um, video editing and I had a camera that I had access to. Well, actually, when I was in college, my parents got me my own camera. Mm -hmm. uh, v remember the days of VHS? Yes, I do. <laughs> this was a this wasn't one of those big bulky ones like our family had prior to it. Um, it was a it was called a Slim Cam, so it was like oh, four yeah. and a half pounds. I remember those. Yeah, you remember the Slim Cam? Yeah. yeah. So that was a sweet that was a sweet sleek device yeah. there, and it and it took good footage, you know, for standard right. definition VHS. It took really good footage. Right. And so um, I tinkered with that, and there was a time where I was playing with that. I would get an idea for a scene. But since I wanted to act, I also would put myself in the scene. But I wouldn't even necessarily get an idea for full stories. I would just get an idea for a scene and then do it. And then now I have a scene um, with, with nothing around it. <laughs> but And then, and then I, I dabbled in some script writing, but I wasn't like superb at it. Um, but anyway, I just I remember there was this time where I was like, man, I wish I could be in front of and behind the camera at the exact same time. Right. 
because I love both of them. But over the course of the years and over time, and after moving to Southern California initially, now I'm in Northern California, but after moving to California and, and, and so on and so forth and doing extra work on sets and stuff, over the course of time, uh, the Lord was changing my heart, I believe. And um, basically, I just I, I enjoyed being behind the camera more. And I found myself more and more behind the camera, uh, you know, both creatively and directing and, and whatnot. And then every once in a while, I would, you know, show up in things that I did. Um, for example, I do have a director cameo in Church People. Awesome. So, That's so great. In, the, in the first couple of minutes of the film... See if you can spot this right here. All right, all right. <laughs> well, that's and, one of the... <laughs> and see if movie star flashes across the screen. No, <laughs> but that's, one, uh, of the, that's but, one of the perks of being the director, though, right? You can have those cameos, like you know Peter Jackson or those guys. So yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's 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 certainly um, easier to get right. them when you're the director. <laughs> um, but it's not always. It's not necessarily a slam dunk because. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of voices on a project. So I right, mean, right. if if somebody higher up than my position put the kibosh on it, then you know, I I, I wouldn't have been able to do it. Um, yeah, that's what a lot of people don't understand is they think the director is just kind of like, and and he is to a degree. He's kind of like you know, he's kind of yeah. like a rudder. He's kind of like a rudder on a ship, right? Uh, well, but he does well in production. He well actually in the different phases, like in pre production, production and post, he is like. But especially in production, he does steer the ship. Mm -hmm. But there's still producers and executive producers, and like there's there's still a hierarchy. And right. the director isn't the top notch. But if a movie does really really well or really really poor, right? Who gets blamed? <laughs> Typically, <laughs> it's either the director or the actor right. or both. Right. Everyone, if it's a name producer, it might be the producer. Like you know insert famous producer's name oh that was a great movie or all oh, that movie stuck it, you know whatever right um but what people need to realize is like if you ever watch behind the scenes there are gobs mm -hmm. of people i mean we had a cast and crew i think it was around 85 people mm -hmm. and that's just in the production phase right of course um in post-production even more people came on board you know with editing and so forth and mix you know sound mixing and color correction and you know there's all kinds of elements involved so there's lots of voices in the kitchen sometimes and um and and, and not every you know and so so i i basically relearned in this process that you can't uh aside from jesus like that's the one person you can praise you know for mm -hmm. for whatever <laughs> he's he's worthy of praise mm -hmm. but aside from deity uh, when it comes to mere mortal human beings, you know, um, it, you can't really point the finger at or applaud one person when it comes to a movie, right? Because there's so many elements involved, and a lack in one department can, you know, break a movie. Uh, 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 you know, something excelled in another department can help make the movie. So it's it's such a collaborative effort from the top down. Absolutely. It really is. Absolutely. And then talk a little bit about uh, as being a believer and you're on a movie set. And I'm assuming not everyone there is going to be a believer. I know you've got right. definitely you've got some believers in your cast and crew, but but they're, not everyone. It's not going to be 100 percent because that just never happens in nature. So, yeah, talk if, a little if, bit. Yeah. Talk a little I was bit about say, if I'm not mistaken, um, most of our cast and crew were not believers. If so, I'm talk, not so talk a little bit about as a director and as a believer, how do you inspire um uh, and show people Christ on a film set in a production environment. Uh, what are what are some ways you can do that? Well, I think uh, what, top of mind what comes to mind is you know displaying or you know allowing the light of Christ to shine through you, displaying the fruits of the Spirit, which I I fail at miserably. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean I'm not at all like holding myself up as the example. Um, but uh, but you know practically speaking that's I mean that's that's how you do it you you demonstrate the hands and feet of Jesus um, and um, I try to be uh, you know kind and polite and I try to hear how other people are 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 seeing something or feeling or whatever um, and and it's it's kind of a balancing act you know I mean you you um, at least have an idea of what the truth is. 
Um, and so you're navigating what you know to be the truth in these waters of mm -hmm. yeah. different philosophies and opinions. But when it comes down to like a film shoot, typically it's about it's about the project. It's about the story. It's about like, what's the story that we're trying to tell? And there were unbelievers um, on the set who loved the story. Like they, they, there was, as a matter of fact, whether you're a believer or not watching the movie, I guarantee you there's going to be characters you'll be able to resonate with, at least on some level, because in the story, there are believers and non-believers, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. mostly believers because it does take place at a mega church. Right. Um, but there's all kinds of different stripes of believers. Even in that scenario, there's people who are ultra selfish and, and egocentric. There are people who are all about the bells and whistles and the show. Mm -hmm. And then there are people uh, played by uh, like Thor Ramsey, um, who plays pastor guy sides, who's all about like, let's get back to the simplicity of the gospel. Right. Right. And so Absolutely. even amongst believers, there's all kinds of, of different personalities because we're all human and we're all unique. Yeah, and we're all at different points in that sanctification process, you know. So some yes. of us may be baby Christians and we're still drinking milk. And then other like Thor's character may be older and they're, you know, they're dining on the meat. So, yeah, I, absolutely. And, and, and I think depicting that in a realistic way in a Christian film, I think it's critical because it can't be all, you know, it can't be all sunshine and roses and rainbows, right? I mean, it just can't be. So, yeah. So That's tell us true. a little bit about what inspired you to direct this particular story. So. Working with Thor Ramsey, honestly. That so was I was it. a it's Thor Ramsey. Like... <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, that was that was a that was a big impetus. Um, you'll really like this story a lot. Um, so uh, back in my bachelor days, um, I had just recently moved out of a very unhealthy living situation where I had a bunch of roommates. It was a ministry type setting, but it was very unhealthy, and so I moved out and um, I, I had a bachelor pad. I, I rented an apartment no roommates. Um, peace and quiet was nice. And, but I sensed that I really needed to laugh. Like I sensed the Lord was working on my heart and I really needed to laugh. And up until that point, and even somewhat at that point, um, I was the kind of, uh, budding filmmaker who thought like, Hey, if I do something faith-based, then it has to be meaty and it has to be heavy. And, you know, where's the meat? Right. And, and it, it has to be like, it has to be, mm -hmm. but in case you haven't figured it out yet, I'm a quirky goofball. <laughs> and so even, and especially if I was acting in it, which uh, my very first 168 film project, shout out to 168film.com. But my very first of many 168 film projects, I starred in the short and um, standard definition, you know, really, really, really low budget but um, I'm quirky. And so my quirks even came out in my acting. Um, and so even when I tried to, tried to be like heavy and serious, um, a lot of times, not every time, but a lot of times I would infuse my quirkiness because I thought, it, you know, I'm, I thought it was funny or I thought it was cute or whatever. Sure. And, and so that, that was my humor. And so I don't know where I was going with that story, but it, oh, so anyway, <laughs> so... So I'm doing these quirky little videos with my, I, I had this idea for a, uh, a video where the reveal at the end of the video is this bachelor is talking to his goldfish <laughs> and I didn't have a goldfish. So I went out and bought a goldfish for this one video idea. And so I did this one video with the goldfish and me and the reveal at the end is I'm talking, you know, you see the, the shot is through the fish bowl and me looking at the fish and I'm, you think I'm talking to a woman or something like, oh, you're so, right. you have such pretty eyes and you're so, but why won't you ever talk to me and then reveal goldfish in the bowl? Um, and, and these videos are still on Facebook because Goldie the Goldfish has a Facebook page. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I was a bachelor. What are you going to do? Um, I cannot so, wait to see this video. I just, I'm yeah, all about just, it. just go to, go to Facebook and type in the search on Facebook. Goldie with a Y, Goldie, G-O-L-D-Y, the goldfish. You'll find it. <laughs> and go to the videos that one video turned into about 10 more videos awesome and so i'm doing these videos and and around that time though too um i feel like i needed to laugh so i i have the subscription with christiancinema.com i go to the comedy section 
and pretty much mostly alphabetical order. I just looked right. down the line. And early in the alphabet is something called Bananas yes, absolutely. Comedy. Yes, it is. Hosted by Thor Ramsey. Thor Ramsey. <laughs> so I'm devouring one at a time these Bananas Comedies uh, DVDs that are coming in the mail. Right. And I'm watching the behind the scenes. I'm watching the interviews with the guest comics. And even one of the shows, uh, Sean DePierce hosted it because Thor was the feature comic. And he right. did a set and told his backstory. And so I'm just, I, I'm devouring these. And I'm and I'm sitting there watching the opening graphics. And Thor pops up in the opening graphics all fun. And I'm like, man, what would it be like to be friends with somebody like Thor Ramsey? Yeah, absolutely. I thought the same thing. <laughs> and now I know. <laughs> <laughs> if if Thor was on this interview with me, he would probably chime in at this point. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> um, but but no, and so anyway, um, so I'm making these these quirky Goldie the Goldfish videos, and I've been connecting with other comedians on on Facebook, like uh, Thor Ramsey, Michael Jr., John Branion, you know, Christian comedians I'm seeing either in Bananas or Thou Shalt Laugh, which Thor was in several of those as well. Right. Uh, my favorite, a little side note, my favorite set that I've seen of Thor's is his set on the first Thou Shalt Laugh. Have you seen Thou Shalt Laugh? I don't, I, I don't, I've seen a bunch of them, so I don't know which one. Okay, you're go watch the first Thou Shalt Laugh and watch Thor's set where Patricia okay. Heaton introduces him. Okay. That is probably my favorite set of his. Um, out of all the sets I've seen. And I've seen them live and I've seen them, you know. Um, so anyway, um, I'm sending these quirky Golden to Goldfish videos. I'm posting them, of course, but I'm also sending them to comedians. Mm -hmm. And either Thor saw a post or whatever, but he, we were connected and we had some sparse communication really quick. He's a quick, he's a quick emailer and messenger. He's, he's not, he's not very verbose and wordy typically. Right. And, um, uh, so, uh, he reaches out to me one day, like out of the blue and says, tell me about your film background, dot, dot, dot. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, my, my head's still like a, this is Thor, Thor Ramsey's asking me about, film. like, what's going on? Like, 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 is, is he, is he doing a show where he's interviewing filmmakers? What's going on? Well, what I didn't know at the time was he had this script at the time called Youth Group. And he was like, well, if. If I'm going to get this movie made, I got to network with filmmakers. And yeah. here's this guy doing goldfish videos. He's a filmmaker. <laughs> like, you know, and, and, you know, it wasn't great writing on my part, but he liked the visual aesthetic and he liked the idea. He liked the concept. And so um, he reached out. And um, in my very long and verbose response of backstory, <laughs> and I originally wanted to be an actor, and like, you know, like I, did, I didn't know what he wanted, you know. So did, I'm did, like, did you I'll start the, the story? Did, did you start the email with "It began in the womb"? I did not. I did not. <laughs> but that might have been funny. Where were you when I was composing that email? <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, so I send him a response, and in my response, as I'm responding, I sense, because I was going to ask him to be part of my 168 film project that year, right. and I'd already asked Michael Jr., and I'd already asked John Branion, and, um, and, but I never got around to asking Thor for some reason, and so in that response, I, I asked him in my very verbose way of, <laughs> if he would consider coming on, I couldn't pay him, blah, 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 you know, all that stuff, yeah. and uh his really quick response back was basically that might work. Send me the details and I'll, I'll tell you about why I asked about your film background when you're in LA. Awesome. You know, it was, it was like super quick response to my very long response. Right. And, uh, and so the long and short of it is, is we did this uh, short film called skip listening. Um, and for the one, six, eight, we didn't know what we were embarking on because the one, six, eight, if you're doing the speed film competition, it's structured in a way where there's a theme for the year. And right. that year, the theme was hearing God. Mm -hmm. This was 2010, hearing God. And then um, you get a, you get a verse. Each team gets a Bible verse that's related to the theme, but you don't start writing and scripting until you get that Bible verse, which right. is about 10 or 11 days before the one, six, eight competition starts. Right. So we get, we get uh, Nehemiah eight, nine B to 10, which is um, about uh, pe the people are realize their um, mistakes, their sins, but the, but the but the encouragement is uh, don't be sad, 
you know, rejoice because now you, now you know the error of your ways. So rejoice. And so that was our verse. And from then we could springboard into writing what became skip listening and side note for anybody out there who wants to maybe possibly fund the film. Huh? How about that? We have a feature length script now for skip listening that we would love to get produced and made. And it's, it's still in, it's still being, uh, the script is still being tweaked. We don't have a shooting script yet, but we have like a fourth or fifth draft of the script. That's awesome. Um, and so anyway, uh, that's a side note, but Skip Listening was this beloved short film that we did. It was our very first collaboration, Thor and I together. And while we were prepping to shoot that, he tells me about youth group, gotcha. which is now church people. And um, and that's how, I mean, I, I was a Thor Ramsey fanboy. I was sure. honored that he wanted to, you know, collaborate with me originally he wanted to to direct and star in youth group but as we were filming um skip listening the short he uh he was like yeah i I don't think i want to direct youth group anymore and i'm like well who do you want to direct it hoping he would say me but i wanted to give him the opportunity and he's like well you could direct it like yes yes i can (laughs) and that's originally how i got the gig that's awesome. That's awesome. There's oh. so many awesome lessons in that story as well for, you know, folks that are out there who are aspiring to be in the industry. And, and one of these is something I personally say all the time is that we have not because we ask not, you know, there, there's so many people just like your story, Christopher, where they said, Hey, I just, I just asked and they said, yes. And, and here I am. And so praise God, you know, yeah, yeah. Another I, I even have an acting, I even have an acting story like that, just super fast on that yeah. note, because, because a lot of what we're talking about is who, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, and I don't mean that in a nepotism kind of way or in yeah. some kind of a shady kind of way, but like, it's a team collaborative effort. You, the best film, your favorite film was not created in a vacuum and it right. certainly right. wasn't produced in a vacuum. And it, Almost, I can almost guarantee you, your favorite film was not shot, edited, directed, produced by one person. Right. It's a team collaborative effort. And so it is a lot about who you know in that context, networking and so forth. Right. And so real quick acting story. You're out there and you're an actor. So um, I'm in college um, and my RA at the dormitory, my resident assistant at the dormitory knew that I was in the theater program and uh, the local... Um, news station wanted to shoot uh, commercial spots. They had a they had a series of commercial spots they wanted to do, and one took place in a dorm room. And he knew that our dorm room had kind of a unique setup because we actually had a loft. Uh, my roommate and I had a loft set up that he That's brought cool. in, and so um, so he knew I was in the theater department, and he knew we had a, a cool setup in the room, and he thought it might work for the location for the shoot. And so he decided to let them scout our room, mm-hmm. and I had a acting class scheduled that day and either it was canceled or we got out early otherwise I wouldn't have been in the room at the time but I got to I got to go to the room whereas normally I wouldn't have been able to while they were scouting it and I had a moment there where I'm like do I ask and I asked do you have actors for this Mm -hmm. and they were like oh we're we're going to go through your theater department and I said (laughs) well I'm in the theater department I'm like, oh, and that's how I got the audition. So later that day, I auditioned and I was cast. There was, it was a three person um, cast, and I was cast as the, as the lead. And that was my very first commercial spot. And what was really cool about it, too, not just that story, but it wasn't just super duper local to the, you know, the village of Westerville or the <laughs> city of Westerville, really. But you know what I mean? It wasn't like this poor dunk little But people, where I went to school an hour and a half ish or less away um, actually saw the commercial because it was, it was, um, it was like Columbus and surrounding area. So within like, you know, 60 miles or so away, people could see this commercial spot. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, people were freaking out because they saw my mug on a, (laughs) you know, front and center in this, like, I mean, like the, the, the commercial opens with a close up on my face. And um, it, it, so it was, it, so there's, so there's a story of like, you know, opening your mouth. Now, granted, there's tactful ways to do that. Sure. And there's annoying ways to do that. So you want to, 
navigate the waters accordingly. But there's all kinds of stories of mm -hmm. how certain actors got cast in certain roles and whatnot, and how certain directors got to direct their first movie. I mean, there's all kinds of stories of all these unique, different ways. And there's no, there is no cookie cutter formula, but there's certainly some practical steps that you could um, infuse in your approach, whatever approach is appropriate for you at the time. Yeah, and I think it goes back to your point earlier about, you know, any production is going to be <clears throat> the effort of several individuals. It's never, it's almost never just, you know, a single individual. And so as Christians, if we're looking for opportunities to serve somebody, to serve a production, um, you, like you said, you may not even be getting paid. It just be like, hey, I'm more than happy to come and grip for you, or I'm more than happy right. to, to come and just, you know, hold a light for you or something like that. Um, then that might put you in an opportunity where you can then ask, you know. And Another thing that I see on, you know, I'm, I'm involved in a, in a number of uh, uh, social media groups of, of Christian actors and directors and, and so on and so forth. I do want to give a shout out to somebody who I saw posted recently, Anita Cordell. She's an actress. Um, she's also a realtor. Uh, but she just posted about being on a set recently. I believe it was the Vindication series if i'm not mistaken and she's working in a completely different department mm -hmm. uh, please forgive me if I, I mess this up but i think it was wardrobe she's an actress and she's right. a stellar actress mm -hmm. but i've seen multiple posts of different actors and actresses and so forth who are doing variation of things on set you know um, i mean and so uh, I think it's important. To, again, it's part of the collaboration. Mm -hmm. So you may not be doing your favorite thing on set to do, whether it be right. acting or directing or producing. But if you can, if you have the availability and, and the feasibility to help a production, um, even if you're just on their radar and, and like, you know, you really uh, believe in a project or something and you shout it out and you mm -hmm. spread it on social media and you tag people, right. um, People remember that kind of thing, yeah. you know? And I think it yeah. goes back as well to being a Christian and having a servant's heart. You know, when when yeah. we're all Christians and we're working together and this project's not about, it's not about elevating me. It's about elevating Christ or it's about elevating the gospel, right. you know? And, and then it becomes easier to kind of put our pride aside and put kind of maybe our hopes and dreams aside and just go, I'm going to pitch in with these guys and gals because they're, they're, they're kicking it for the kingdom and I want to go in there and help them do that. And, you know, I think Pick it up for the kingdom. That sounds like a song or, or a short or something. There you and, go, uh, Brady Pixel. Yeah, absolutely. And but uh, but I think it's an important lesson for a young filmmaker or young actor or actress to learn is that sometimes you just jump in and you pull with the group and that may God may bless that obedience, you know, by being the other thing. I, yeah. The other thing I wanted to say, um, piggyback on that is um, I, I've said I said this in an interview before in uh <laughs> it was with Thor and he sort of made fun of me for a little bit because it's really simplistic but really think about what I'm saying people don't know you exist unless they know you exist yeah people don't know your work yeah, absolutely unless they know your work yeah so utilize the resources at your disposal you may not have a red camera but do you have a smartphone right Right. That shoots relatively decent video. If you're an actor, you can record monologues and you can post them and ask for feedback. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you're a filmmaker, you can practice with your smartphone. Mm -hmm. You may not own a red camera, but you might know somebody who does or right. owns a DSLR or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's where mm -hmm. the collaboration starts. You find like-minded people and you start collaborating. I love working with Thor Ramsey because he's a brilliant writer and he's a hoot and he makes me laugh. Do we always get along? No. Do we always agree? No. But he's still a hoot and makes me laugh. Right. You know, and he's a brilliant writer and he's a good performer. And so um, it, it's, it works. I, and we have different tastes in movies even like mm -hmm. it's like we just had a conversation yesterday he's like man your sensibilities are off because <laughs> there's a there's a holiday classic that i'm like that's overrated and he's like, oh, like what are you talking about so 
you know, so, but, but I mean, but that's a, that's a beautiful thing about being a part of the body of the Christ is we, we can't all be the same, right? There's no way, right. you know, like the hand can't be a foot, right? And the eye can't right. do what a hand can do. And so we've all got to be different in order to do the jobs that God's given us to do. But when we come together, it's like a, it's like an orchestra when all those instruments yeah. come together, you know, a bassoon does not sound like a flute, but when you, when you put all those instruments together uh, at the hand of a masterful director, a conductor, then you get a beautiful yeah. result. And I, and it's the same way with, with Christians. Yeah. And I just, I really want to hone in on, on, on what I was saying though, with that, with that point is create stuff, mm-hmm. do stuff, collaborate with other people. If you want to be a director, start shooting stuff. You don't have to Absolutely. wait for a call from Spielberg or Bruckheimer. That might be a long wait. <laughs> yeah. I haven't gotten that call. <laughs> so, but, but, I mean, but I mean, think about it. If I, if I hadn't, if I hadn't had that idea to shoot something with a goldfish and try to network with Phil and I was, and I, and, and it was so like, it was relatively non-strategic, you know, I wasn't like, Oh, I'm going to get this goldfish thing to him and we're going to do an epic goldfish. Shoot. No, it, like, it, like I just, I thought, Hey, who knows? We might collaborate down the road or so. I mean, like it was so like well, I, would, I would imagine that when you're shooting the Goldie the Goldfish, you're not even thinking about Thor Ramsey. You're just you're just creating that goldfish thing. Right. right. <laughs> I was thinking this is a funny idea. I think people resonate with it. And and for the record, Goldie is a hit or miss kind of a thing. Like you, sure. you people tend to either love those videos or hate them. Right. And and please uh keep in mind it was like, you know. 12 years ago and <laughs> we won't hold against you christopher we won't hold against you. <laughs> but, uh, but 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 do you but do you see my point Absolutely. i made these quirky little goofy one man production videos or one man in a fish production videos <laughs> and and i showed the world yeah absolutely so to speak absolutely you gotta get yourself somebody's out eye and here's another thing so here's what we did with church people you'll love this story so later in 2010 i've so i've I've not only connected with Thor on Facebook in 2009, we worked together in 2010 on this short film called Skip Listening. Later in 2010, after he's told me about the the the, the script that he had, um, and he had multiple scripts, but this is the one that um, we uh, we we believed uh, would would be the first one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so anyway, uh, he later in 2010, he pulls together scenes from the script that he had at the time. And we shoot a proof of concept trailer. Awesome. Proof of concept trailer, basically a mock trailer yeah. that shows people who might be able to help with either funding or resources or whatever. Yeah, that's a great this thing. This is what the movie pitch. could look like yeah. if we had funding. Yeah. Um, there's a movie right now doing that called The Shift. Um, Brock Heasley, uh, with the shift is, uh, doing a crowdfunding campaign through, um, uh, I think VidAngel or something. Uh-huh. And, um, and he's got a stellar looking short film called the shift. Uh-huh. Um, but, but it starts with the idea and then you, you somehow, here's the deal. What do you think is more likely somebody's going to read your 90 page script or somebody's going to look at a two minute trailer. That's a proof of concept, like a sizzle or whatever. Yep. Absolutely. I, I'm going to look at the trailer first, you know, <laughs> everybody. So we, did, <laughs> so we did this. So we did this proof of concept trailer in late 2010. I'm, I'm giving you like the really short version. A couple years later, Stephen Baldwin sees it, really likes it, decides he wants to uh, try to help us in some way. Um, early, the, that, that was late 2012, early 2013. We have an in-person meeting and he's on board with trying to help find the funding. We didn't even know he was going to act in it at the time. He didn't even know if he was going to act in it. So he just, he wanted to help get it made. That's great. And yeah. And, and, but even with Stephen Baldwin on board, it still took a number of meetings and two and a half years before there was full funding. And it wasn't even from somebody he initially approached. Right. They approached multiple people, him and his producing partner, John approached multiple people um, but it wasn't a slam dunk. Mm-hmm. And you know? again, that's, that's such a good and critical lesson for those Christian creatives out there to understand that this is not a quick process. This is a years long process oh. obtaining production. And, and then once you finally get, once the money begins to flow, then you're really just entering into pre-production yeah. at that point. So not here's the really short version of the timeline. 
2009, I connect with Thor Ramsey on social media. 2010, we do our first short, and then later in the year, proof of concept trailer. 2012, it's on Stephen Baldwin's radar. 2013, he's on board, actively looking for money. 2015, at least a portion of the money is verbally committed. And then eventually 2015, the full amount was verbally committed. Part in the bank, end of 2015. Fully in the bank, 2016. So we have the full production budget that we thought it would be at the time in 2016. Cameras are rolling middle of 2016. So this is like several months later. Mm -hmm. Cameras are rolling, 20 day shoot. 2021, it released in theaters. Wow. Almost I've been attached years. to this project for 11 plus years, yeah. Thor even longer. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and, and there are Christian creatives out there. They got to understand that, you know, and, and you can't, you can't just quit your day job tomorrow and become a filmmaker because you're going to get real hungry if you do. <laughs> so that's, that's a lot of wisdom. So thank you, brother. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us a little bit, a little bit more about church people, the film. We've got a few more minutes with you. Yeah. I, I can definitely see, I, I definitely want to have you back on the show at some point. I'd love to come back. Thank you so much. And, you yeah, seem like and, a cool and, cat. <laughs> well, thank you. Likewise. Just the lingo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know and we can have some deep dive into some other areas but i definitely want to tell people more about church people so sure so tell so, tell people a little bit more about the story about and, and where they can find it sure so in a nutshell well first of all churchpeoplefilm.com like sing a tune in your head churchpeoplefilm.com uh, dallas jenkins on the chosen does that with uh <laughs> the chosen merch he, he does a little jingle hey you you remember it yeah you absolutely. remember it but anyway churchpeoplefilm.com um and uh, so the story is uh, Thor Ramsey plays Pastor Guy Sides, who is America's favorite youth pastor. He's America's youth pastor. And um, he finds himself caught inside the megachurch marketing machine where it's all about the, the branding and, and the marketing. And the hype. And he, the hype and 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 like he and he's still trying to preach a solid message like you'll see in, in the opening montage of shots of him speaking at different places oh by the way a little film hack trick um all the different places you see him speaking same location <laughs> oh cool <laughs> same location different lighting different clothes different but i mean like but but when you watch it Tell me if you think that's the same location or not. Okay. Okay. Um, but anyway, same location. So anyway, so he's, so he's still trying to preach the truth, but nobody's listening. Like they're all into like, there's, there, there's this, there's this thing that blew up around them that was product based. And um, you'll see in the movie and, and that's where my little cameo comes in, but <laughs> it's product based. And, and so people go crazy over the product and they want to have his name on the product, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and, but he, he's literally tried to, tried to tell them an important message and right. they're, they're not hearing it. So he, so he's distraught. He wants to get out. How does he get out? Uh, he just wants to go back to preaching the gospel. Like, like he and pastor Skip, his senior pastor did in the beginning, mm -hmm. they had a congregation of like 60 people and they just stuck to the simplicity of the gospel. And, and, but then the senior pastor started going off the rails over the years. This is all backstory, but he started going off the rails and is all about the show. And how do I top the last one? Mm -hmm. And that brings us to uh, kind of the crux of this story is in order to outdo his previous things of like being shot out of the cannon and, you know, whatever the zany ideas were, right. um, he decides to have a live crucifixion <laughs> or Good Friday service. And of course, Pastor Guy is not having it. Yeah. <laughs> and so he's trying to figure out how do I talk him down? How do I like how do I navigate this? Right. And how do we get back to just the, the simplicity of the gospel? And but he's surrounded by the over-the-top senior pastor. He's surrounded by the worship leader played by Joey Fato. By the way, senior pastor played by Michael Monks, brilliant TV and uh, film actor, um, captures Pastor Skip greatly. Um, and, and he was one of the, one of the ones back in 2010, he was in the proof of concept trailer. Actually, he loved, he loved this story from the time he read the script. And, um, so anyway, uh, 
Uh, Joy Fatone plays the uh, worship leader who's <laughs> basically thinks his life is a musical and <laughs> does his part to to make it so. <laughs> sing, yeah, to make it so. Uh, so he sings a lot of his lines. Awesome. Um, so he's surrounded by this zaniness and it's like, so how how are we going to how are we going to navigate through these? ridiculous waters of a blasphemous stunt i mean like this is yeah crazy ridiculous jesus already you know thor's deal is jesus already paid the price right you know, once for all he he did this for us we don't have to do it again you know and, and such such a timely and super important message as well i mean i think that that with this film you guys are hitting exactly where you need to be hitting with the modern church because there's so much of I call it churchianity. I don't even call yeah. it Christianity. It's just churchianity where it's a, like church is a big country club, you know, and yeah. once you're a member, you know, then you're part of the cool club and, you know, um, you're on the in and then uh, we don't worry about the people who are on the outs anymore. So I think this is just a super powerful and timely message that you guys are doing. And I praise God for it. I can't well, wait. Thank you. Um, so something to let your uh, viewers and listeners know is the window is closing to see it at this time of year. Um, April 22nd, I've been told, is the last day for virtual screenings, which, of course, you can find at churchpeoplefilm.com. Uh, virtual screenings, there's a button there that says um, reserve your spot. That's for the virtual screenings, which have set times. And then once you purchase a time, uh, you have within four hours of the time slot you chose to actually start hitting play on the movie and watch it. So you don't have to be like right on the dot. Like I, I ordered seven o'clock, so I got to start at seven o'clock. No, you got four hours from the start time. Right. But uh, so there's that. Um, also, Salem Now has an on-demand opportunity and a purchase opportunity for the movie, a, a, a digital download purchase. Okay. Um, of course, because now we're we're still kind of in the theatrical window, so to speak. Um, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's going to cost more than traditionally down the road, but. Um, but anyway, you can purchase it now if you want, or you can rent it on demand. Um, the other way, um, again, this window is closing really fast, is uh, with, uh, with uh, pastors and church leaders, you can host a showing. There's a button on the website, host a showing. So go to churchpeoplefilm.com. Um, if you're outside the United States and, and want to watch it, um, the virtual screening may not work. So you'll want to go to salemnow.com and find church people on Salem Now because you can watch that, I believe, just about anywhere in the world. So Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Christopher. And I'm thinking of the song, uh, churchpeoplefilm.com. You better not wait too long. So, you know, I'm working on something. I'll, I'll call you. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, here, let, let me pray us out. And, uh, and then right. I know you got another interview right after this, so I'll, I'll let you go. So let's, let's pray. Glorious Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this beautiful day. We thank you for this technology, which allows uh, Christopher and myself to talk uh, even across 2,000 plus miles. Father, I praise you uh, for his willingness to step into the foray of Christian filmmaking and, 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 and bring to bear, Father, all, his, all the skills and all the capabilities that you have instilled in him. Uh, I pray your blessings over him, over his family, um, over all the cast and crew of this film and their families, Father, and I pray your blessings upon this endeavor. They are seeking to make much of your name, of the Son of Jesus, of the Son of the Son of God's name, Jesus, and of the gospel uh, and the cross that He died upon, Father. And so, um, I know, Father, that's right in line with Your will. It's very, very clear. And I just pray, Father, that there will be uh, blessings um, in abundance in response to this obedience. And uh, Father, we just pray that for our listeners out there and our viewers that they will go uh, and take part in this. Uh, this act of creativity, which has become an act of commerce, and they will help support this quality Christian entertainment that Chris and everyone else has been working on with church people. And I just, uh, again, thank you so much, Father, for this time, and I look forward to the next opportunity, if it be your will, that I have to speak with Chris. I pray your blessings on him. In your son's name, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. All right, my brother. Well, I wish I had more time, but I know you're busy and uh, looking forward to the next opportunity. And so for, uh, for everybody here at Theophany Media and Creatively Christian, uh, we'll say goodbye for now, but tune back in because uh, Chris will be back. Amen. See you guys. Thank you so much for listening today. To see the show notes where we put all the resources mentioned in this episode, you can head over to theophanymedia.com forward slash Shaw. Creatively Christian is a product of Theophany Media. 
You can find out more at theophanymedia.com. This show is hosted by Brandon Hollingsworth, Andrea Sandifer, Bill Brooks, and Lynn Baber. Our logo is by Bill Brooks. Our music is by Bill Brooks and Andrea Sandifer. And remember, if you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to rate, review, and share wherever you listen to podcasts. Have a blessed day and keep on creating for our Lord.